While working my recent Ben 10 Genoda Rex Heroes United video, it gave me a chance to look back at Ben 10 crossovers and reflect on just how great they could be. While not particularly expected, the Generator Rex crossover felt like it made sense as a natural progression for both series, both ongoing series airing alongside one another while being made by Band of Action. And then two years later we get the next crossover between Ben 10 and another franchise with the Omniverse episode Thank God It's Saturday, or TGIS. A fun little nod to the Thank God It's Friday acronym. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this series, The Secret Saturday was, was another animated series on Cartoon Network running from 2008 to 2010. It follows a family of cryptozoologists and their 11-year-old son Zack Saturday. They're part of a secret organisation that safeguards and studies cryptids, functioning in a similar way to the plums from Ben 10 or Providence from Generator Rex. Joining their family are their cryptids, Fiskerton, Komodo and Zom. The series largely revolves around Zack as he learns to use his new abilities to control cryptids. Turns out the villain of the series and a cryptid-based television show host Argos is a cryptid himself. After trying to absorb Zack's powers to add to his own, the combination of the two destroys Argos, and seemingly the ability itself. There's more to it than that, but that's the gist of things. It was always a series I managed to catch here and there on Saturday mornings, but it was never one I really sat down and watched all the way through. I do remember catching the series debut, episodes here and there every so often, and finale. I went into this feeling like this crossover was really out of the blue. Other than both being Cartoon Network series, I never really saw any direct connection between the two shows, especially with The Secret Saturdays being off air for around three years at this point. But looking into it, it's clear the creators of The Secret Saturdays had a real laugh for Ben 10. There's a reference to Gavin Prime in an episode, as well as what ties into this episode the most. We see Dr. Animo as in a cameo appearance on a Most Wanted list in the episode of Van Brook's Apprentice. Getting into the special, it's revealed for certain that the events of Ben 10 take place in the same universe as The Secret Saturdays, and it's not just a fun little cameo nod in The Secret Saturdays episodes. The opening of this episode nicely mirrors the opening of The Secret Saturdays. Right off the bat, I much prefer the new voice for Zack. Beyond that, all of 10 seconds in, the bright oranges of the suits contrast so nice against the blue tones surrounding them. Thinking they found a chupacabra fighting against Bigfoot, the Saturdays have actually come across Ben in his Shock Squatch transformation. Zack introduces himself to Ben, already being aware of who he is, saying it's an honor to meet him. A bit more of a positive initial introduction than what we got with Rex Salazar. Actually, in saying that, it's interesting that the alien that was introduced in the last Ben 10 crossover is the first one we see in this one. We're introduced to Doc Saturday and Fiskerton, who along with Zack have all had some really great slight tweaks to their designs. Doc Saturday and Zack more than Fiskerton, funnily enough. I really like the new look of the Saturday suits. Derek J. White mentioned an influence from Gainax, the animation studio behind Evangelion. Doc Saturday lets us know that they're already familiar with the Tennyson's work, previously working alongside Grandpa Max. Turns out Max must have filled Ben in on who the Saturdays were, although Ben in classic Ben fashion accepts that but denies the existence of chupacabras, despite knowing about the existence of cryptids while standing next to Fiskerton. Zack even points out how silly it is that Ben's saying this while wearing a magical watch that turns him into aliens, although Ben quickly corrects that magical statement. Turns out Rook and Ben are already aware that the chupacabras are invading Bellwood. Although Rook is pretty certain they don't exist, the Saturdays confirming that's because their whole deal is that they keep cryptids secret from the rest of the world. Rook's pretty accepting of that. We're to the Saturday's airship. Ben jealous of the airship despite everything he has access to, like the plumber headquarters and his own spaceship. We're introduced to Zon and Komodo, Zon taking a particular liking to Ben. We then meet Zack's mum, Ben taking a particular liking to her. Again, another really great redesign of one of the Saturdays. They all translate so well into Omniverse's art style. We get the confirmation from Zack that the Loch Ness monster exists as Ben geeks out over how cool that is. Turns out Ben never watched Argos television show since it was always on at the same time as Sumo Slammers. The two have a really nice bonding moment over growing up and having responsibilities that get in the way of television and being a kid in general. Cut to Drew and Doc, the pair of them working on a cure to the Chupacabra's ability to turn people to stone, working out that the life force has been drained from this stone person. There's an alert that the Chupacabra is attacking Mr. Bowman's store. We get the classic hero shot of both teams running in. Turns out the Chupacabras are draining aliens of their life force and storing these little machines on their back. Zack's able to use his abilities to reach out to one of the Chupacabras to little effect with them all running off. And we're introduced to the crossover's first villain and perfect complement to the introduction of cryptids, Dr. Animo who for the second time in Ben 10 revives a villain, for the first time being in the classic series episode with a future timeline with Vilgax. This time reviving Argos, with a brand new body Frankenstein together with various scripted bits. Turns out the two of them were already in touch prior to Argos' defeat. It's revealed that this is what the life force of the Chupacabras have been draining was for. Argos not being too impressed with it taking Animo three years to reanimate him, and being even less impressed with the fact that he's given him a body he didn't pre-approve. I can't give enough credit to whoever came up with this new design for Argos, there's not a detail that I don't adore, although I do have quite the weakness for this type of creature design. Zack lets us know that he still has some residual bit of his old abilities left, even though they were supposedly destroyed at the end of the previous series. Cut to about 200 metres in front of them, we have Argos fighting against a team of plumbers. 
Argos is overjoyed and in disbelief that he ran into Zack accidentally right away. Turns out Ben agrees with me, calling Argos' new body totally rad. Even Argos is coming around to liking his new body. Mostly what it can do for him as opposed to how it looks, I imagine. I adore how theatrical Argos' voice is. I think he's the only returning voice actor from The Secret Saturdays. If anyone out there actually knows what bits and pieces his new body's made up from, I'd love to know them. We get this fun clash between Argos and the others before Animo comes in with his chupacabras to his aid, allowing Argos to escape. I love how silly Fiskadon looks here in his little vehicle. Cutting back to our villains, Animo is now repairing Argos' recently damaged body. It turns out Animo has spent the last however long making an army of amalgam cryptids, calling them Franken cryptids. I really like that. There's some really great creature designs here. Cryptids, other than chupacabras, being near uncontrollable, even with Animo's antennas. Although Animo was able to give Argos a new body the ability to telepathically control these cryptids, the team then breaks into Animo's lab, greeted by a near empty room with their evil plans conveniently laid out on the desk. When I say near empty, the group is then attacked by Argos' henchman Munya. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Who, like the rest, looks dramatically better in Omniverse than with his original design. Physicaton absolutely lays into him here, using one of Mania's webs to bring him back in to hit him over and over again. That's something I'm finding more appreciation of in Ben 10 in general. The way different characters move and interact with their environment, particularly in fight scenes in Omniverse. Now at the surface, Argos and his army of Frank and Cryptids are attacking the city. Thankfully for everyone, Drew and Doc said they evacuated the city before Argos arrived. There's a brief exchange before Argos gets a hold of Zack, Drew berating him for a bit before Ben and Shock Squatch forces Argos to drop him. Another great showing of Shock Squatch who proceeds to take out Argos' entire army with a single shockwave. I always forget how powerful this transformation is. Back in his human form, Ben's overwhelmed by Chupacabras as Dr. Animo takes some voice memos on mutant ideas, wanting to cross Fiskerton with an owl man and giving bees knees. Back into the action, we get Zack against a new and improved Argos. I love the dragon arm breath. Zack works out pretty quickly that they should be able to siphon Argos' stolen life energy to shut down his new body. Luckily, Ben has a transformation who can siphon energy. Then we get some infighting between our villains. Animo being defeated by Komodo in all of 5 seconds. Feedback comes in and drains Argos' life energy, I suppose functionally killing him again, shooting that energy into the atmosphere. Then given the opportunity to become a famous hero like Ben, Zack lets us know that their work being a secret is crucial to stop people like Animo from gaining access to cryptids. And we have it, the episode ends on a nice little photo of everyone. I'd like to assume that everyone turned to stone was fixed in between episodes, I don't think this is ever addressed again. This episode was an absolute breeze to get through. If you'd asked me how long this episode was from memory, I would have told you it was a two-parter. In the same vein as Heroes United. It feels like there's so much packed into such a short runtime. I've absolutely loved the return of these characters, and I can see a real appeal for a reboot or a follow-up series for them. Especially with how much cryptids are in the zeitgeist nowadays, I feel like that wasn't really a thing as much as when The Secret Saturdays first aired as it is now. I feel like everyone talks about cryptids, especially for maybe the last 10 years or so. If it wasn't clear, I really enjoyed this special, particularly the new look for the Saturdays and the new creature designs. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.